This is our unboxing and first impressions for the Xiaomi Mi 11. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The box on it has the 108 megapixel on the outside as well as the Harman Kardon logo at the bottom. Getting into it, you have the SIM card ejector tool as per usual as well as a clear case. The main specs displayed on this is the 108 megapixel camera, Snapdragon 888 as well as the WQHD Plus display with 120Hz refresh rate. Now the phone itself looks very nice in hand, I already love the design. Type-C at the bottom, no headphone jack, bottom facing speaker, volume rocker and power button, no fingerprint sensor on the power button like the Mi 10T this time, as well as a top infrared and sound by Harman Kardon at the top with the secondary speaker. You also have the front camera on the left side of the display, triple camera setup at the back with a 108 megapixel sensor, the retail box will have the dongle to convert 3.5mm to USB, also the charger and the cable are included. Let's get into the setup process. Setup's pretty straightforward, you have the under display fingerprint sensor again that works pretty darn well, but setup's complete and there you have it, the Xiaomi Mi 11. One thing I did notice right away is the fact that the display is curved towards the edges. I'm not really sure why we went back to curved displays. They have accidental touches and I'm not a huge fan of curved displays overall. Also the four corners have like slightly thicker bezels, which overall seems a little bit odd, but we look at this in the full review. The overall build and design to this feels very, very premium. There are two color variants coming here to Malaysia. The one we have is the Midnight Grey as well as the Horizon Blue. Both of these look very nice and stunning. Overall, the build quality to this is very, very nice. And I do like how it looks and feels very premium, very top of the line. Now let's take a look at the camera module at the back of the phone. You have a massive 108 megapixel camera carrying forward from the previous generations with a very big sensor. So this is something we'll talk about later. You have a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle lens as well as a tele macro lens, 5 megapixel, which we'll talk about in detail as well. Ultra wide performance looks really great. Distortion control is pretty much the same as before. 2x in digital zoom. Overall, HDR control looks really, really nice. You have pro video mode features with a histogram at the top. You get to shoot log in 4K peaking for focus exposure all of that is there so for the pros you're really going to enjoy this in addition to that you also get 8k video recording with 30 fps and not just 24 and apart from that obviously you have the 108 megapixels and some movie effects that i'm really excited to try out now here's a couple of examples of it in the full review i'm going to show you the full thing here's the parallel world effect and the second one is going to be the zoom effect where it pretty much locks the subject in focus and then you move in and out, sort of like a vertigo effect you've seen in a lot of feature films. The macro lens on this is something that I found super impressive. When you click on the super macro mode, it switches to that and it's a tele macro lens. So it's not like those cheaper macro lenses on previous phones. This gives you decent image quality and more detail, far more detail than you could get. So this is a standard shot, closest distance, this is a shot taken with the macro lens. The tele macro works really well. You can get a lot more detail and take really sick looking shots. As you can see, we would be taking in the full review. HDR control overall feels really, really great. Overall rendition of the colors is a lot better as well. The sensor being massive on the 108 megapixels, you get more depth of field and out of focus elements at the back. The bokeh looks a lot nicer in our first testing. We're going to do proper testing for this obviously later in the full review. So make sure you guys check that out when it comes to the portrait mode as well the edges the edge detection was a lot better than we have seen previously that's pretty much what we'll talk about for the camera for now let's take a look at the sound quality out of the speakers in broad daylight outdoors <laughs> Let's quickly talk about one of my favorite things on this, that is the display. The fingerprint sensor is underneath and it works fairly quick, it's not too slow. It'll also integrate a heartbeat sensor a little bit later with an update. The display on this is absolutely stunning. Xiaomi has done a brilliant job with the display this time around. It's an AMOLED display, 1440p with 120Hz refresh rate. This gives you the best of everything. And even a phone like Samsung was struggling to give this to us with restrictions on battery life, yada, yada, yada. But overall on this, you get 1500 nits, peak brightness, HDR10+, and 10-bit color. With all of that turned on, I still got about eight hours of screen on time when I was using the camera for most of it. Pretty awesome. 
So that was just the first impressions on the Xiaomi 11. There's obviously a lot more to try out with the Snapdragon 888 with multitasking, gaming, fastest touch response on this. Obviously the camera aspect of it, we have to explore more on that as well. A bunch of new features added in, HDR video, HDR picture, 8K, 188 megapixels, movie effects, so much to talk about. That will be coming in the full review. We're also briefly gonna be comparing it to the flagships like the S21 Ultra, the iPhone 12. So make sure you guys are subscribed for that and we'll see you again in the full review.